Hello everybody and welcome back to another Jurassic World Evolution 3 speculation video where we're going to be going over a few more features that I thought of that could make pretty cool additions to the game and really give some of the animals in particular more life. There are also some features in here that I think could improve some of the gameplay and uh, just some other features that, that could make animals more deadly when they escape enclosures. So let's get into it. Our first consideration is predators being able to carry prey. So say if a T-Rex uh, manages to kill a Gallimimus, I think it would be pr pretty cool if it were to pick up um, the, the corpse of that Gallimimus and carry it off to a safe distance to eat it. I, I think that would be uh, a really cool detail added in here for larger predators and small prey. As like, yeah, and, and you could even have a similar thing with larger prey as well. So say if uh, the Scorpius Rex takes down a Parasaurolophus like it did so many times. It could drag that Parasaurolophus to the side. And that was actually seen in Camp Cretaceous when the Scorpius Rex hunted those Parasaurolophus Lux. So I think that would be a pretty cool feature as well. Dynamic attacks on vehicles is another thing I'd love to see. The gyrospheres are currently impervious to attack. So I think it would be pretty cool if something like the Indominus Rex were to display an animation similar to what it did in Jurassic World, picking up the gyrosphere in its jaws and smashing it con um, continuously on the ground until it gets the people out. I think that would be pretty. That would be a pretty cool addition to the to the game, and some other different uh, vehicle attacks would be pretty cool, like tipping over the jeeps or even some animals being able to catch. The helicopters or something that would be pretty cool but basically making the attacks on vehicles more dangerous rather than the animal just hitting them you could actually rip at them and like the t-rex in jurassic park tip them over but then like start um chewing down on the tires or something speaking of escapes dynamic chases on vehicles and guests would also be pretty cool and there are many examples of this in the Jurassic franchise, particularly with animals like the Indominus Rex, the T-Rex, the Atrociraptors, Raptors, and um, Spinosaurus, where they all had unique chase scenes, and I think those would be pretty cool to chase down guests with. And in some cases, um, guests could become cornered by a pack of dinosaurs, like what happened with Alan Grant in Jurassic Park 3 when he was cornered by the uh, multiple Velociraptors. I think that would be a pretty cool feature as well. On to some things for our lagoon creatures. Allowing the creatures to um, breathe from the air would be pretty cool. As marine reptiles, they didn't have gills, so they would have had to come up to the surface to breathe. And even though they do, they don't actually look like they're supposed to be breathing necessarily. So I think a specific animation where they come up to the surface and um, spout somewhat like a whale, I think that would be a pretty cool feature. And breaching. Um, would be a very cool feature as well, seeing um, the Mosasaurus just go, uh, just just play, it just leap out the water, just splashing around, that would be, that'd be pretty cool to watch. Another feature I'd like to put in here is a water clarity changer. So currently the lagoons look like this, they're rather murky, so I think a cool feature would be to change the, uh, the clarity of the water much like what you can do in planet zoo where you can make the water like almost crystal clear um well actually crystal clear <laughs> yeah you can get it very very much transparent or translucent <laughs> even but yeah that would be a cool feature to add in in here even changing the color would be pretty cool expanding our omnivorous dinosaur roster would also be a pretty cool addition like omnivorous ornithomimids and pachycephalosaurs. So say we got some other smaller animals added in as AR, as like live feeders, that would be pretty cool for some of these animals to expand their diets. Or like a gallimimus to eat up insects or even small reptile, that sort of thing. And pachycephalosaurs could do the same. Expand the diets of pterosaurs would also be pretty cool as many pterosaurs actually had very unique diets. Allowing them to eat more different kinds of food like crustaceans, insects, fruits, and even mollusks and stuff like that. Like giving them multiple different feeders. Like, like here you see um, this Ornithochirus carrying a fish. 
you see if the last of drama is chewing down on mussels and i don't know what that pterosaur is um but it's eating fruit so that would be pretty cool um pack speeding together would also be a pretty cool feature as well because Right now, it really is only one animal feeding from a carcass at a time, so allowing the pack animals to feed as a swarm, and like even even like the scavengers, that's more for the swarming, um, where you could have dinosaurs even hopping up on top of the carcass to um, get more areas to eat. Like as seen here in Walking with Dinosaurs, when the Postosuchus succumbs to its injuries, the Coelophysis um, just swarm in and feed on it. That would be pretty cool to watch. Another uh, thing that I'd love to see is marine species able to feed from dead animals. So when a marine animal dies, it, it would be pretty cool if you could have it that um, other marine reptiles could come in, or just marine species could come in and feed on the spoils. So say something as big as the Mosasaurus dies in your lagoon. If you have any smaller animals in there, they could feed from it. Although that's probably a bad example because the Mosasaurus would eat everything anyway. But just having a more natural ocean behavior would be pretty cool to watch. Like if you had multiple large marine reptiles in the, in the in a habitat, say if you had a big lagoon of Tylosaurus, one Tylosaurus dies, they're not just gonna let that carcass go to waste, and so they're gonna feed on it. So I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, the gradual decomposition of carcasses uh, would be pretty cool as well. And even through either by time itself or through consumption, so like this picture here of this T-Rex, um, it could be pulling off certain bits of the carcass and um, that could just leave a unique like skeletal remain uh, behind because that's sort of the idea, like a dinosaur just gradually decomposes and all that's left is like skin and, and bones. I think that'd be pretty cool to see as a, a more realistic method of decomposition rather than it just popping out of existence. Scavengers able to swarm injured prey animals would be pretty cool as well. Back to like the Postosuchus and Coelophysis, if there's an injured dinosaur in a habitat where there are scavengers, uh, they could possibly uh, follow it and wait for it to succumb to its injuries, or even speed up the process by um, every now and then nipping at the, um, the prey animal. So I think that'd be pretty cool. Um, one of the lesser... Uh, <laughs> dignified what uh, methods in Jurassic World Evolution 2 is tranquilization so currently when a dinosaur gets tranquilized it will just flop down onto the floor in a ragdoll um, physics uh, thingy <laughs> but like that would be it would be pretty cool if instead dinosaurs actually stopped and laid down when they were tranquilized like feeling woozy they're not just going to let themselves fall um, it, it's funny to watch but like it it would be much more realistic to see the animal just um, slowly, like slow down after running and then just lay down and go to sleep, basically. So I would just like to talk about some redesigns for some of our base game dinosaurs. Well, uh, well, I guess Megalosaurus would be a base game here as well in Jurassic World Evolution 3. As some of these animals do have interesting designs i'd like to say they don't really live up to some of the skeletal remains that we have i remember like in the last video i was talking about more accurate dinosaurs um, as variants but in this case it's not really making them more ac like um well fully accurate it's more just giving them features akin to like the real animal so like giving them their namesakes and features that you'd see on on a dinosaur such as this so Acrocanthosaurus is a great example. It's, it's known as the high spine lizard, but it doesn't actually have a high spine. Um, Carcodontosaurus could have a slightly changed skull shape, I feel, to better match the actual skull of the animal. Albertosaurus as well could have those reduced brow um, crests that look like large eyebrows <laughs> brought into more of that just like slender crest look. And Megalosaurus... Um, could be toned down as well, and maybe given a few more, few more little spike um, spines going along it potentially, much like the illustration I have here, just making it look a little bit better in my personal opinion. But these could just come as like more accurate variants or something like that. 
It's just that the designs have long um, sort of bugged me that they aren't really that close to how the real animals. And I know the Jurassic franchise isn't known for its accuracy, but at least you can sort of tell what an animal is supposed to be. I mean, you can with these, it's just that they don't really look the part as well as they could. So something else I'd like to add in here is more like live prey options. So aquatic live prey and smaller land dwelling animals as live prey. So some things like small mammals would be pretty cool. Frogs, turtles, lizards, termite mounds would be pretty cool for some of the insectivorous species. And in like deep water that we could have in this game, you could have fish and various other things, maybe even eels. Um, I think those would be pretty cool features to add in for the prehistoric animals to interact with. Even a snake would be a pretty cool addition. Just various different animals. And I think last time I talked about like real animals interacting with some of the prehistoric species. Um, so who knows, we could get that. <laughs> um, another feature here is more power sources like solar and wind and maybe a properly integrated geothermal energy option. I think those would be really cool to sort of lean into the more sustainable power uh, options that we're learning about today and rather encouraging uh, our world to integrate as an alternative to fossil fuels. I think that would be pretty cool to see in, in here. Functional seasons would also be a really cool thing to see play out in the game going from spring to summer to autumn to winter just gradually seeing the change in in the in the time of, of your park so like if you're building in say the uk and you've just got these nice um leafy trees and then they slowly become orange um and then fall off and leaving them there for the winter so i think that'd be pretty cool to see play out Now something that I noted in my uh, coverage of the Jurassic Park Trilogy Overhaul mod pack is more film specific skins for every movie and show. So like having a 1993 Dilophosaurus or having a 2001 Triceratops or a 1997 Pteranodon. Having specific skins akin to the animals that you see in the films. And you can even apply that to the Jurassic World Trilogy. Like having a Jurassic World Barrier like a 2018 Baryonyx skin and a 2018 Indoraptor skin that are accurate to the animals that you see in the films. So I, th I think those would be pretty cool additions. Species specific footprints would also be pretty cool as like I've seen in the game many of the footprints are somewhat generalized but many of these animals do actually have very different footprints. So you could have a specific theropod footprint like we currently do or a thyroforan footprint like for a stegosaur or, a, or an ankylosaur. An ornithopod like an iguanodont or something like a hadrosaur having specific footprints and sauropods of course having unique footprints as well. I think those would just be pretty cool features to give animals their own identity when you're like looking at their footprints. So like you can, you can say that that's definitely what that is. And I think that you could even play that into the campaign like if you're tracking down a dinosaur and you have to follow the footprints in first person and you can tell what kind of an animal what kind of animal it is by just the footprint i think that'd be pretty cool on with the uh, footprint trend different natured terrains that sort of better display the tracks of animals would be pretty cool so like softer sand deep mud um, solid rocks where footprints wouldn't be able to be displayed and dry soils which would have the faintest of footprints. I think that would just be really cool to add a diversity of terrain. It would also allow us to create proper sand dunes where the animals actually look like they're sinking into the sand a bit um, due to their weight. And even deep mud, that could play into how heavy sauropods are where they could create such a deep footprint that it could actually act as somewhat of a pitfall trap for smaller dinosaurs. I think that would be pretty cool. Um, now onto a few features that could improve the aviaries. So changing the height and shape of the aviaries would be pretty cool. Like it would give us more, more freedom in how these aviaries look and it, it would make them feel a lot better for some animals in particular. Like the current aviaries are just way too small for Quetzalcoatlus. 
either that or Quetzalcoatlus is way too big for them. Um, as well as being able to add caged pathways and viewing points into the aviaries would be really cool with space for a ranger gate to go into on the side. Um, being able to change the aesthetics of the aviary, like whether it was made of mesh, glass, or an invisible barrier would be cool as well. Um, a similar feature could be added to the lagoons, giving them null barriers that could be manipulated to blend with the surrounding land. Adding monorail tunnels to both would be a really cool feature as well. Adding something like the Terratops Lodge would also be cool for guests to have accommodation looking over the pterosaurs. Complete building sets is also something we really need, with all building sets including a different version of every kind of building. I say this because the Biosyn building set missed its own versions of Avery's and Lagoons and hotels and none of that. So I think that's something that really needs to be in the next game, having complete building sets. So alternative buildings for every single um, kind of, of building, alternative designs and such. Um, translating customizable amenities to more buildings would allow us to create much more unique parks, allowing us to change how hotels look, how the arrival points look, how restrooms look, and all that sort of stuff. Even changing how the monorail stations look as well, like giving us a ground level monorail or a, a high monorail, even changing the, the path to the monorail station. So either making it straight or making it um, like a boomerang shape like we've currently got somewhat. Um, I think that'd be a pretty cool way to give us more unique parks to build. Returning to the original research um, method from the first game would be pretty cool. Much, it's, it was much simpler and easier than the current tech tree that has a lot of bizarre roadblocks. So yeah, like something like this would be a very cool um, return to form, I would say, as it was much easier to unlock things. I know they're adding it in as a challenge, but some of the roadblocks really don't make sense for some of them. And um, yeah, this was just a much more um, fun and less, uh, how, how do I say this, less infuriating um, research method. It's like sometimes I've just gotten stuck in a tech tree and sometimes your park just doesn't let you get to certain parts in challenge mode. So yeah. A world map selector would be a really cool feature as well, being able to pick exactly where you want to build your park, as currently you only have a set number of locations, but something similar to Planet Zoo's um, world map would be pretty cool. Like able to pick where in the United States you want to build, if you want to build in Africa or South America or Australia or somewhere in Europe or Asia. Having that option would be a really cool feature added in here. More filters for the genome library would also be a much easier method of finding what dinosaur you want to add into your park. You could um, better precisely pick what kind of species you're looking for. You could have filters for the time period, the era, the age, or potentially even through what family of dinosaur like sauropods, tyrannosaurs, dromaeosaurs, and ceratopsians, that sort of thing, allowing you to um, narrow down the kinds of animals you're looking for and makes them easier to find. I know the search bar could just help you um, name the dinosaur, but not everybody knows the names of every dinosaur, so it, it would make them, it, it would make these animals much easier to locate in the genome library, especially if we were to get a lot more species. Having that sort of option would be a pretty cool addition. Choosing what kinds of animals to fill the genetic code would be a really cool feature. And being able to add and remove certain species from the genetic code. I've seen a lot of like illustrations that on like um, social media and stuff of certain dinosaurs in the Jurassic franchise having certain features added on and certain features taken, taken away. So something like adding chameleon, cuttlefish, tree frog DNA to animals to camouflage and stuff like that. Um, but more physical characteristics could be used in from inspiration from monitor lizards, crocodiles, snakes, and also just more of like a kind of dinosaur. This could allow us to create middle ground species, like a Dominion Giganotosaurus with reduced crocodilian features or additional Giganotosaurus DNA, which could both reduce the crocodilian features as well as change the skull shape, the muscle mass, 
and more and some other physical characteristics allowing us to have more control on how these dinosaurs actually look i think that'd be a really cool feature it's probably a bit complicated but i think it would be pretty cool i'd also like to take this time to propose a deluxe edition that i would like to see in the next game so with Cenozoic species potentially being in here i included one um and yeah, there's no species from the previous game being included here. Is that that is just annoying. So and, and it takes a, takes a slot away from a more interesting animal as well. So our first consideration is Irritator, and I think a new Spinosaur has been long overdue and would be a really cool addition at this point in time, with characterized features of what we currently know about this particular species today, like the pelican throat pouch and like the paddle tail and stuff like that. The herbivorous dinosaur I had in mind was Miragaya, a unique long-necked stegosaur from Portugal. Um, the seagull-sized and often alike Ramparinkus is our flying species, and I think it'd be a pretty cool addition to get as another sort of larger but also small pterosaur. Like, it's around a Morphodon size, so I think that'd be pretty cool. The marine species I think would be pretty good is the Tamnodontosaurus, a large hypercarnivorous species of ichthyosaur. There were plenty of other options like um, Prognathodon or Pliosaurus, but I think those would be better for like base game, potentially. Lastly, for our Cenozoic slot, we have the mysterious Andrusarchus, an animal of which we only have the upper half of the, the skull and really nothing else. And so it's a very interesting animal to really design, and I think I'd love to see uh, Frontiers crack at it. And uh, yeah, that's my deluxe edition for Jurassic World Evolution 3. I know. It could easily be changed for some other species, but I feel like this is a pretty solid roster for a deluxe edition. And so that is... Okay, that has to be the last one, right? The Of the new features, speculation videos for Jurassic World Evolution 3. Like, there are only certain fe there are only so many features that you can think of. Like, there were a lot there, but um, I think between all three videos, I think we've got enough. <laughs> I think that's enough new features that we need. And, like, it could make the best dinosaur game we've ever had. And, um, yeah, I would certainly love to see Frontier take some consideration to actually um, try and make some of the features I've, I've proposed in these videos work, as I think those would just be really um, brilliant additions to the game. But let me know what you think in the comments down below. What other features could you potentially see in Jurassic World Evolution 3? And what you think of my deluxe edition idea? Um, leave your alternative designs in the comments down below and as for now i'll see you all in the next one bye bye